All right, this is the third video in the playlist. This is a quick introductory guide to the, the scene graph in ProRender, object manipulation, moving things around, turning things on and off, object selection, that kind of a thing. So once you've imported your data into ProRender from Inventor, you'll be presented with this layout. It's the review environment, but we want to go into edit, select that at the top, and then on the left-hand side, you've got your scene graph, which is similar in some ways, but not too many to Inventor's model browser, which is, uh, most people should be familiar with that <laughs> using ProRender for Inventor, but your model browser is the building of your part or your assembly. It contains all of the nodes, everything that makes up uh, the thing that you're building and that you're designing. So once you've imported your data into ProRender, it does its best to kind of respect the build in your browser. And you can see it's done that here. If we go into the scene graph, expand root, uh, and I've got an assembly, so I've got an assembly node. Under here, we've got instancer and prototypes. That's just a pro-render terminology thing. It's got its own way of doing things. But under there, we've got the nodes that represent the sub-assemblies in my invented data set. It's done a pretty good job, actually. So my invented data set was broken down into, say, for example, these three centers, well, left wheel set, right wheel set, and then a center fabrication as sub-assemblies. And it's done a pretty good job of recognizing those here as grouped nodes. So you can also do like a reverse lookup as well, like a like a finding browser that Inventor has. So you make sure you've got your selection tool enabled, select an object in the main viewport, and then it will do a lookup in the scene graph and then select it there, which is quite useful for finding things in the scene graph. A couple of other things you can do in here. Uh, you can do multi-select, hold down control. That'll let you select multiple things. Or you can do select in bulk using shift. Text search, put the cursor in here, and then you can type away for something that you recognize, a part that you want to find. Just bear in mind that ProRender does seem to suffix a lot of text on the end of your file names. I don't know what this means. I don't know what it refers to, but it might make searching tricky. Uh, but it does keep your original file names in there. That is retained. Uh, for example, 50866 or 886. That is the, the original file name for that particular node. But I, don't, I just don't know what the rest means. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, text search is there if you need it. Uh, one thing to bear in mind as well is there is no right click interaction. So if you are like right clicking for something and you're like, wondering if you, is your right mouse button knackered or no, there, there just is no right click interaction at this point in ProRender. Uh, so yeah, that's not you. Okay, once you've selected something in the viewport, uh, on the right hand side, you've got a properties panel. So this is how you can interact with and then move, rotate or scale objects should you need to make a change to them kind of after you've imported them into ProRender. It's up to you, you know, if you're using Inventor 2022, you may find it easier to kind of move them in Inventor, right? It depends on what it is you're doing. You know, if you if you create an, something for the purposes of the render, then it might not be appropriate to do it in Inventor, but um, you've, got the, you've got the tools there either way to do this in ProRender. Just bear in mind though, that the, the properties is based on X, Y, and Z values and there's no immediately obvious notification within the viewport as to where X, Y, and Z falls, right? There's no axes or world coordinate system notifier, uh, triad, or anything like that. So it's going to be trial and error. Depending on what part you've imported, if you've got a small item that you've imported, then you may see an X, Y, and Z indicator, but you can quite clearly see here there is none. So it's a complete guess at this point as to where X, Y, and Z is. So if I select this part... I can go into, for example, translate, which is move, and I can type in negative 30. And again, units, there's no indicator as to what units we're using here, what it's being converted to on import. It's just whatever it is, right? You know, it is a render, it is visualization, so it's not a, it's not a manufacturing tool. So the units tend to not be something that's given a lot of focus. So yeah, that's move, trend, then you've got rotation, and you've got scaling, which works on a very similar principle, X, Y, and Z values. So yeah, that's the scene graph. That's transform using the, the properties panel. And that's a very quick introductory guide to what you can do with the scene graph and the transform tools in AMD's Radeon Pro Render. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video.